In the debate over regulating crypto, there seem to be two sides of the <clears throat> Bitcoin. And as many different ideas and proposals, people who claim to have the right plan. But something will change with crypto regulation. So let's find out what that is. Let's bring back in our friend, Anthony Scaramucci, as well as the policy director at the Duke Financial Economic Center, Lee Risers. Lee, I'm going to start out with you because we just talked to Anthony. You've got your doubts about certain things around crypto. But how does this shake out? Ultimately, in five years, if we do this show again five years from tonight, What's our headline? Well, Anthony and I have a staked dinner bet on the price of uh, Bitcoin in five years. So I'm on record saying it'll be uh, no more than $1,500. So, you know, we'll see what happens here. You know, as I've said repeatedly, Brian, you know, for crypto and Bitcoin to have any value long term, it has to provide genuine economic utility. It has to be useful for something. And we just haven't seen it yet. And we're 13 years into this by technology standards. Bitcoin and crypto is old. So if it hasn't happened yet, when will it happen? And Kate's right. It trades like a risk asset. Until recently, it's only existed in a zero interest rate environment. The moment the Fed started hiking, crypto plummeted. So it's going to be a while. I mean, the Fed's going to continue to hike you know, well into 2023. And so crypto prices will remain depressed for a while. Uh, and what it looks like on the other side of this rate tightening cycle is anyone's guess. But long term, I just don't see it having any value. OK, I mean, listen, I hear you. You, you. you saw some value. You said fifteen hundred. You didn't say 15 cents. So at least you didn't you at least you didn't go down to zero. Anthony, here's oh, the thing. I get the whole. He's it's hedging not, himself. It's not B. new. It's not new. The first stock trades were done under the buttonwood tree in 1792. I don't think 12 years later than NYC was exactly booming. Birthing a new asset class takes time. Well, I think he's hedging himself. I think Lee thinks it's going to be worth 15 cents. So he's trying to give himself a little bit of a price is right buffer, <laughs> which is totally fine. Uh, Not I think at the, all. The, 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 pro the problem that happens uh, with that type of thinking, in my opinion, is just, he's just not doing enough detailed research and assessment on the growth and the applications of not just Bitcoin, but things like Solana and Algorand and Ethereum. And so I think I think Lee's going to be wrong. We do have a steak dinner bet. He better hope that he 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 wins that bet, though, because the wine that I'm going to buy on Professor Lee, you have no idea, Brian, the amount of wine I'm going to be buying at that dinner if he loses. But if you're here's, right, here's it better be thing. better here's because the bit that means Bitcoin's going to be worth a ton of money, Anthony, and that'll be worth you're going to be worth even more money than you are. Yeah, and being the guy that I am, I'll end up buying the wine at the dinner. But you definitely, you know, you can show up in McDonald's French fries because they are my favorite. But we're having Wagyu steak at that dinner. Lee. Well, maybe maybe you know Peter that. Luger will accept actual Bitcoin instead of just actual cash. At but that you see, point. that's going to happen. But Brian, that's what's going to happen. That, this is what he's missing. It's because not going to happen. 19... I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's not going to happen. It's far no, too he's... volatile. Any asset with a fixed supply is always going to be volatile. And why would you accept it as a merchant when it could go down by 20 percent? within a day because Elon Musk sends out a tweet. I mean, this is completely asinine. Look at the situation in El Salvador when they adopted Bitcoin as legal tender. It's a humanitarian disaster. The IMF's cutting off funding. The credit rating agencies are downgrading their sovereign debt. So it's just not going to happen. And I appreciate right, but, Anthony's but Lee, perspective. I've been teaching about this for six years. Those are 2021 talking years points, so freshen University. up the talking points. He's talking his book. You know, this, he's doing what any good fund manager should do when they come on this network, which is talk their book. All right, one of us has skin in the game. The other doesn't. So your viewers should take I, what it's worth. I, well, first of all, I don't need to talk my book, Lee. If I didn't believe it and I didn't do the research, I wouldn't be saying it. But I understand what you're saying about some fund managers, and I appreciate your cynicism. But what you're missing, because you're dialed into like a 2020, 2021 talking point, is you're missing where we're going to be in 10 or 20 years. Okay? In 1998, it took me 35 seconds to land my AOL page when they were saying you got mail. 24 years later, we've got billions of people that are streaming 4K video on the Internet, and we're doing trillions and trillions of dollars of transactions. So you're looking at something statically that's going to move exponentially, Lee. And so that's the thing you're missing. Your buddy John Stark, God bless him. It's my 40th <laughs> high school reunion this weekend. I hope he shows up. But he's missing it, too, because you're on missile lock of stubbornness with old school thinking while Anthony, the world is changing. Anthony, before we're right. living Embrace in reality. Why don't you come join us? 
I, I am living in reality. I'm watching the fastest growing segment of the economy, the best performing asset class over the last five and 10 years. And I'm looking at the opportunity and the exponential growth of applications. And I would like you to be a part of it. I don't want you to miss it. I was a skeptic once. I looked at this stuff very skeptically. When I came out of the White House, I said, if the Treasury Department is already talking about this stuff and the potential digitization of the U.S. dollar, I've got to do my homework. I did the homework. I put the firm's money in, in position, and I think we're going to be very well rewarded. And remember, my Bitcoin prices are in the sixteen dollars to $18,000 level. They were purchased back in October of 2020. Uh, this has been a very good long-term performing asset class over the last 13 years. Lee, is there a point at which you would say, I got it wrong? What could turn you into a believer, a Bitcoin believer? Well, listen, you know, I do practice intellectual humility. So I, you know, I'm open to the possibility that I may be wrong. Um, but I haven't been wrong yet, to be honest with you, because we still haven't seen, you know, that so-called killer use case. And at this point, Brian, you know, cryptocurrency has taken on religious elements. I mean, it even has its, you know, canonical text in the form of the Satoshi, you know, white paper. And the thing about religions is that they can last a very long time. So that's why I say, you know, there's still going to be some interest in cryptocurrency, you know, long after the rest of us, you know, have moved on. All right. But people grow up, you know, they ultimately recognize that there's no value here. There's no fundamentals. I mean, there's what no I would value ask, in a painting. What, I mean, right. Other ask? than people think it's beautiful and it's not going to be replicated. There's some yeah, ugly, if there, if there are some if ugly if paintings from the 1500s of like, you Bitcoin, know, some Dutch woman file. doing this just, that sells for $20 million, Lee. Bitcoin's just a computer file. I get the fact that an asset is worth whatever anyone pays for it. You know, but on this network, you talk about financial assets and there's a valuation methodology. Professional money managers have to make an assessment. Is a given asset overvalued or undervalued? And they have... You know, time-tested methodologies to do that. What do you use when it's cryptocurrency? There's no cash flows. Yeah. There's no fundamentals. So why is Bitcoin worth twenty-one thousand today and not a hundred thousand or not so, five dollars? Because you know, we got to go. Like so to because surely, somebody thinks the, it's worth twenty-one thousand dollars. Professor, read the ascent of money. Professor, read the ascent of money by Neil Ferguson, and let's I'm, talk about the technological tightness of the ledger known as Bitcoin. And you understand it in the historical context of money. I'm going to be convinced that you'll end up buying one for yourself. Okay.